Welcome to the Cup of Linux Lounge. I am Zalik, a member of the Cup of Linux community. Mark Shuttleworth's recent closure on Ubuntu Linux bug number one, Microsoft has a majority market share, placed a meaningful, if somewhat controversial, exclamation point on how far Linux has come since Linus Trollvalds rolled out his first version of the OS in 1991 as a pet project. Microsoft may not have been taken down on the quickly fading desktop, but the nature of computing has changed completely. Linux has a huge presence from cloud servers, desktops, tablets, and phone OSs. So what does the future hold? On today's show, we have Far Evil D, Matthew Moore, Toss Today, TSS, and myself, Zalek. And here is our mentally deranged, radically insane show host, Spatry. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe I'm that radically insane. <laughs> uh, I have to go goodbye. <laughs> Welcome one and all to cupoflinux.com. This is a great place to learn about using Linux and interacting with the community. Here you can ask questions, share your experience with others, or just come in to enjoy a few laughs. Now, tonight is our first cup of Linux. Blah, blah, blah. I can't even talk tonight, Toss. I think something's wrong here. It's the cereal <laughs> Get rid of it already. It see, must be it? the cereal. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, you're going to have to see off topic here on the site uh, to check it out. It's uh, some mean <laughs> marketing there. So tonight is our first Cup of Linux Lounge podcast, and we're going to be discussing the future of Linux. But before we do that, I wish to say hello to the members of this community uh, who are on tonight's panel. And we'll start with you, uh, for Evil D. You're one of my uh, you're one of my uh, moderators here. Uh, how you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. A little tired. Had a little bit of work to do today, so I'm doing fairly well. Awesome. And then, of course, we have Matthew Moore. He's been on many of our podcasts. He has his own show on YouTube. How you doing, Matthew? Pretty good. All right. And then, of course, Toss Today. Everybody knows Toss Today. Uh, he's been on on a blah, 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 blah. He's been on a number of podcasts as well. Can you tell I had too much caffeine, Toss? Oh, for the love of Peter Paul, I came back for all these mistakes after three months. My goodness, I'm doing <laughs> fine. <laughs> and then, of course, we have TSS Killer. Uh, so TSS. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I will do, Spat. Um, first of all, I'd like to say hello to people on IRC and on Facebook and stuff like that, and uh, people who have uh, listened to me in the past eight years or so. Um, I'm from New York City, and um, I've been an on and off Linux user now since about 2003. And uh, first distro that I ever used was uh, Mandrake 8.1. And the first, uh, f and I, and the first thing I, and the first thing I have to say is, uh, remember the days of like Slackware 9 and uh, you know Mandrake 8.2 and Red Hat 8, which I didn't actually like the um, the layout of back then. But I can tell you this much: um, I I used Linux for a good time, about two year, about two years in a row for uh, my you know my AMD Duran desktop back in the day. And I tell you that uh, Linux actually gives me the freedom of uh, you know experimentation with my computer and uh, I kind of came back into it about a couple of years ago and um, and now with uh, Spatry's community here at the Cup of Linux I feel very empowered to um, try to go back into it um, more often because I have now an, an AMD APU ring which I just run dedicated Linux for a home theater PC and I just love the customization and the, you know the feeling of freedom and um, I like to thank Sp Sp uh, Spatry for letting me on the show you see the thing is we all have you know see Spatry is bringing out all the speech and impediments in ours tonight so enjoy the show guys <laughs> and then of course we had uh we had uh zelik who uh gave us our introduction and you know what paybacks or medivex zelik for saying i'm insane but that's okay we'll pass on it today how you doing uh, i'm doing fine i'm hailing from ontario canada and i've used linux for the past year and a half now or so <laughs> I don't know what else to say. What am I oh, supposed oh, to say? I got Line. relatives in Canada, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Now, before we can talk about the future of Linux, uh, we should probably talk a little bit about the past. Now, a lot has happened uh, in the Linux world uh, since it was initially released. You know, uh, some of you will remember back in the early days, it really wasn't well documented. It was hard to install. It init initially, it didn't have any uh, software choices. And I I'm sure we can go on ad infinitum. So my first question to the panel is, uh, what was the turning point? Uh, what was the most important change you encountered with Linux, which caused you to switch from your uh, other operations? Operating system you're using over to this one. We'll start with you, Far Evil D. Uh, yeah. Uh, initially, my 
my coming into Linux was initially started by just trying to find something better that worked and functioned and a lot of curiosity. And then I just strolled upon Linux and been using it ever since. And what was that turning point for you, Matthew? Uh, well, it actually worked. That's uh, the, the beginning of it. But um, yeah, I, I was on Windows and I found myself getting bored because almost every single time it was the same old thing just over and over again. My desktop looked like the guy's desktop next to me and so on. And then one day I was on YouTube and I saw this Compiz Fusion thing and I thought that was extremely cool. And I started exploring that and discovered just how deep the customizability could go. And that's pretty much which what drew me in. And we know that you dual boot uh, toss, but I understand that you use Linux more than your Windows desktop. What was that turning point for you? Oh boy, let's see. Briefly, my first exposure uh, to Linux, about 2005, 2006, it was Ubuntu. So I guess I have to thank Ubuntu. If it wasn't for them and for others, I wouldn't be here. My first ex um, exposure, my first impression was, man, this thing is really fast, faster than XP, but not really newbie friendly, still buggy, not user friendly. Try it for a couple more years i kind of stopped for a while i started getting back into it in 2009 with the likes of um you know linux mint zorn a little bit more user friendly a little bit less buggy uh i liked it ever since of course in 2010 i started the uh, total os today channel for newbies for beginners because linux has gotten better and better i still dual boot with windows 7 that's my preferred windows but like you said, um, because Linux has gotten less buggier, not as good as Windows 7 in my experience. However, it's good enough for me where I boot more into Linux, such as Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, and Zorn. I use that more than I do Windows 7. So for today with me here, I am satisfied, yes. TSS, I have to ask you the same. What was that turning point for you uh, that got you to switch to Linux? Well, it all started about 2003 while I was uh, a freshman in high school. Um, it all started with um, one of, one of uh, my co-workers at that point um, bringing in um, a few distributions of Linux. And, um, you know, this was a time where the machines that we built during that time had, still had Windows 98 on them. And uh, I had very limited experience with XP because I know XP was a buggy mess back in the, back in the early days there. And uh, what I really liked about Linux was that it had I, I had the freedom of, uh, doing whatever I wanted. I can like go in and change a few comp files without having to completely destroy and re uh, reinstall my OS. And uh, especially when I first got, uh, first had a cable internet of my own back in 04, um, I started using a distribution called Blag or Br Brixton Linux Action Group, which was later um, endorsed by Richard Stallman. I used to be a, uh, a package builder and tester for them for about a year and a half. And um, you know, it, it was it was just that the amount of customization, um, I really liked the way that it, it was very stable and f functional and it, plus back then it could actually run on 256 megs of RAM without choking. So that was pretty much what it was. And plus, the best part of it, and a lot of people will agree, is that I had to actually change out my system because my brother borrowed my slow AMD uh, Duron and I had to use a Celeron 700 and I was able to just plug it in to that to that old uh, Dell, uh, Dell system and actually run it for like two months and I didn't have to reinstall a thing and that was the best part about it. And and awesome. uh, now that I have now that I have you know faster hardware, it makes me appreciate Linux more, and uh, it's become a heck of a lot easier in the last uh, two or three years. And uh, I think honestly, it's like maybe ninety five percent there for being a, a total desktop replacement for Windows. Awesome. Okay, and then Zolik, I have to ask you the same. You know, uh, what was that turning point for you? And I realize you've only been using this for about a year and a half now. Uh, yeah, I I've already told Spatry uh, how I. Actually other teenager with Linux, uh, I wanted to become a hacker for unknown reasons, just mainly because I can just tell my friends, hey, look at this thing. Uh, the original distro that I had on there was uh, Backtrack 5 Revision 3, I believe it was. And uh, eventually, uh, I was bored with it because pretty much I wasn't really doing much on it. And I thought, oh, I really should go back to Windows, but the speed on this is so good, but it's just very bloated with the stuff that I don't even use, because when I had it installed, I just used it for web browsing or whatever, so then I switched over to Ubuntu Gnome Remix, uh, which is based on Ubuntu 2010 at the time. 
and I used that for a while and I thought, oh, this was, this is pretty good. And I've been on and off a bit, but, uh, I've been on Linux in a street there uh, continuously for at least like six months now or so. Okay, good. And I think the turning point for me was, uh, you know, uh, and I've been trying Linux distributions over the years from the late 90s. And uh, and then, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, I had problems with something not working. You know, I'd pop in a Linux distribution and maybe my audio wouldn't work. Or maybe the next time, you know, I couldn't get Wi-Fi working. Or, or you know, there was always one little niggle that just prevented me from, you know, moving over to Linux and really sticking with it. And it wasn't until three years ago when I saw the Oz GUI show and he was demonstrating Linux Mint. I figured, you know what, this looks kind of cool. I'll give it a try. I uh, burned a disk, popped it into my computer, and everything worked. And it completely blew me away. You know, and in the prior to that, when Vista came out, I tried Ubuntu because I saw some videos on YouTube. People had these barrel effects going on, which is now Compiz. And uh, I was like, ooh, I want to try that. I think that looks kind of cool, you know. And, uh, you know, um, I just couldn't get anything working. And that takes us to our uh, next portion, you know, because there were poor video drivers that, that weren't available, but it seems now we do. And uh, so here in the present, we see companies stepping up to the plate thanks to the love thing from Linus. You remember that one, don't you, Toss? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, the la la finger. So we, we got these companies stepping up to the plate. NVIDIA, ATI, and other are provide others are providing better driver support for Linux, so thanks in part to uh, Valve or Steam. And even Gabe Newell himself believes Linux is the future of gaming. Now we know on February 14th of 2013, uh, the Linux client was released, and presently Steam offers 463 games for Steam OS slash Linux. And uh, quite possibly, game developers may be pushed to make you know, Linux versions of their games, which will run on Steam OS. And of course, anything that's going to run on Steam OS is definitely uh, going to run on Linux. So, um, uh, this is so. This next question to the panel, and we're going to start off with you uh, for Evil D. You can either speak about your gaming experience, or you can speak about your driver's experience, because I know some of you don't do any gaming at all. Um, you know, uh, did you notice any difference with drivers, or um, a, as far as gameplay? Uh, would you say that you have a better, you know, better gameplay experience uh, in Linux over Windows, better refresh rates, that sort of thing? We'll start with you for our evil D. Uh, yes, uh, I've had very little bit of driver issues with uh, Linux. Maybe it's because of the way my hardware just works, I don't know. But, um, it's, and that's the other thing, you know, I didn't have to have a special disk to install drivers on my computer with Linux. With Windows, I always had to have, I have to have on my hardboard, a motherboard disk to install drivers for even the even for my internet. I had no drivers for it right out of the box. Whereas Linux, all my drivers work. I didn't have to worry about installing them, except for maybe my NVIDIA drivers for Steam. And my Steam gaming has been 100% better in Linux than it was ever with Windows. My games don't freeze up and lock up. Um, like a couple of games that I run, like um, Euro Truck Simulator 2 runs beautifully in it. And it would be more jagged in uh, Windows. And uh, even though, um, and a bunch of other games that I do run uh, Linux Steam under Wine, that require win that are Windows games like um, the Farming Simulator I use. Um, that one runs a lot better in Linux than most of the games do in Windows. How about you, Matthew? How's your experience with uh, the drivers or gaming? Well, I don't do a whole lot of gaming. Uh, most of the games that I have run on Linux are just the native Linux one, like Super Tux Card or whatever, but it's been pretty smooth. As far as drivers go, I have had a few issues here or there, but it's mostly kernel-related. A simple update to the kernel usually fixes it. Um, but that's usually on uh, older, uh, more obscure hardware, maybe some of the newer stuff. For the most part, uh, the out-of-the-box functionality that I've experienced is actually pretty good, you know, considering that there's no uh, official commercial vendor support for a lot of the hardware out there, and somehow it still manages to work on so many different devices. It's actually quite an accomplishment, I think. Now, I think I just opened up a can of worms because I can just see the steam coming out of Total OS Today's ears right now. Tell us about those ATI drivers, Tom. God, the, the smoke. <laughs> Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Well, look, um, Spatry knows my 
past situation, and I'm not. Do doing, I ever? And you know what? I'm never going to let you live it down. To of us. course. Hence, hence, <laughs> I, hence, I coined the term horse stable versus stable, stable good horse stable doo doo. Look, uh, I don't play a lot of games in either Windows or Linux. Although I've made up my mind once once I have enough funding to buy my new test machine, I will be testing. Linux games. It won't be a gaming channel per se, but I will be testing Linux games fully installed to be fair. But look, from my personal experience and only mine, Windows versus Linux gaming video drivers in Linux, I think they still suck. It's getting better, not blaming anybody. Uh, but if I had to pick one, when I buy my next machine, I probably will stay away from the ATI graphics card because from my understanding, Spatchy, there were less issues with Intel and NVIDIA. True? You know what? Um, my personal experience is the ATI drivers keep getting better because with every update that I'm getting uh, in Manhoro, you know, uh, it automatically downloads the latest ATI drivers uh, for my kernel. And I have not had any issues. As a matter of fact, okay. it's been a pain, pain-free experience. So, uh, you know, I have to ask you, though, Toss, have you tried any of the newer ATI drivers that are shipped? I, I'm, I'm scared. Not having a separate test machine where if something just... I mean, if if something happens to break, I won't care because it won't mess up my my you know content lap of my content creation desktop. What I'm using now, I don't want to mess that up. But I haven't because of my experience in the past. I'm not like I said. I'm not blaming anybody. But once I have a separate machine that is isolated from the machine I'm using now, I won't care if something doesn't work or breaks. But to answer your question, no, I have not. Okay, I, I'd suggest that you try them because, you know, uh, the the newer drivers seem to be getting better and better as they go along. And, okay, let's uh, hear from uh, TSS on this topic. Uh, can you briefly uh, describe uh, your experience with gaming and or drivers? Well, especially in the last couple of years, the driver has the drivers have uh, definitely improved. Um, I will say though, in response to Toss, though, um, I have I have my AMD APU rig here, which I just run. It's a it's a uh, for the technically inclined there. Are we still here? I got silence. <laughs> well, I'm still here. Um, we got. Um, I have a. Um, it's not. It's not the. It's not the. It's not the Trinity. It's the one. It's the one after that. It's the. You see. You see. I'm going blank here. But anyway, I have. I have an A8 6600K. I'm probably going to remember it in like two minutes. But uh, I found that the open source drivers are almost as good as the ATI ones. But I. But I'd say the open source ones are better because you can run XBMC with full hardware decoding for video. And also, I found out that I. That I actually installed Half Life 2 and uh, Left 4 Dead 2 on this box, and it. Runs Runs pretty much it pr- runs pretty great. Um, like I said, I don't I don't run Windows on this. I do I do have a my main machine does have a GTX 470. Guys, I'm getting silence. And uh, Spat, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, then then it's a problem with Toss's drivers then. Yeah, drivers, sound drivers. Anyway, <laughs> um, in, in any case, uh, continuing on with that, I actually also found out that I read the documentation that I can actually get CUDA working with uh, G- with the with the Nvidia cards. But actually, that's not my that's actually not my um, my most impressive story. I have a I have over here an Inspiron 530s. It runs a E2180 pro, uh, Pentium processor and has onboard Intel GMA 950 graphics. The funny thing is, under Windows 7, I cannot get OpenGL to work. However, when I loaded um, Zubuntu off of a USB key, it was a uh, 13.10 at the time. I was able to run any OpenGL. I was able to run um, OpenGL things for like emulators and things like that. Where Windows, I would just get a blank screen. So stick it, Windows. All right. Okay. Okay, and then uh, Zelik, uh, we'd like to hear from you on this. Uh, what is your experience with gaming and or drivers? Um, I've had a number of driver problems, but those are mainly due to user error because I was on Arch at the time trying to set up NVIDIA drivers. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm surprised that no one's actually brought this up, but the fact that Open, or sorry, DirectX hasn't been updated in like five years now or so. Um, but the fact that OpenGL is still being openly developed like I've definitely noticed an increase. I've actually read an article on this before whereby uh two people or people took uh two different screen captures Guys, of if Left you can Dead hear me, I'm getting silence in my so <laughs> uh, okay uh anyways 
Uh, I lost my train of thought. Anyways, uh, they uh, a couple people took two screen captures of uh, Left 4 Dead 2, one on Windows and one on Linux. Linux had a higher FPS rate, or frames per second, and uh, Windows actually had a le less of that. Uh, so there is a definite increase in uh, Linux for that. All right, uh, appears that Toss is having some uh, audio issues uh, presently. I just sent him a message and that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and move on because uh, we've got we've got um, we've got a lot yet to cover and very little time to do this in. So um, let's move on here. Um, all right. So many of you know, in the present, the U.S. government is using Linux in space. The U.S. Navy's uh, warship of the future. Uh, is going to be running Linux. The United Kingdom and other governments have switched to open source. Because of the mass usage of Linux, we are seeing Softpedia believes that Linux, that Linux will probably force Microsoft to offer future Windows OSs for free, with Windows 9 being the last OS that they sell. Uh, what is your opinion of this? And we'll start with you, Far Evil D. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be good to see, but you can't have a good operating system without competition. Um, if you ain't got somebody that's always pushing you and pushing you to do better and better, I mean, it would be great to see Windows finally do something intelligent, but, I mean, that's the way it goes. I don't know. Uh, what do you think about that, Matthew? Well, as a user of Windows 8, uh, I think Microsoft is actually kind of lost right now because they moved from Windows 7 to Windows 8, and then everybody complained, and then... They've been scrambling and trying to put things back to win back the customers that they lost, and they still have failed to get it right. They hear what the users are saying, but I think they miss the mark every time, and, and I think they're trying to follow in other people's footsteps. I think they're trying to do what Apple does uh, with iOS and Mac. They're trying to follow what Google does with Chromebooks and Android, and it's just not working. I think they're getting desperate. I don't know how it's going to pan out. But uh, what I've seen as a Windows 8 user is, you know, through this process of trying to win back the customers, they keep changing things. And every time they change something, they either upset the modern UI people or they upset the desktop people. They seem to fail to please everybody at once, even though that that's what they keep doing. And uh, I've seen a lot of people leave Windows 8 and go to Linux because of this. Um, because on Linux, you can pretty much change your desktop experience to match what you want it to be. And nobody wants a desktop that, that just changes itself every nine months to a year when they can't seem to get it right in the first place. And consider, if you will, you know, for those of you who have been computing for many, many years, you'll, some of you will remember that Internet Explorer was on the store shelves, and it came with a, it came at a, you know, a, a, at a pretty hefty price. And then Netscape Navigator started offering their browser for free, and then other browsers hit the market that were free. So this forced Microsoft into making a, uh, you know, free web browser. Which and then they decided to you know force this on people by, you know uh, by uh, including this as a part a part of the operating system, which started that legal fiasco with Windows ninety eight years ago. Uh, how do you see it, uh, TSS? Well, to to uh, key off of what Matthew said, um, Windows eight and also Windows Server two thousand twelve disaster in terms of UI. I mean, who would who would want to use a touchscreen OS on a server machine? But um, what really Microsoft needs to do is they need to step up their game. Um, offering the OS for free wouldn't would not necessarily be enough. They would actually have to go back to their roots and uh, actually have people choose what kind of desktop experience they want because not everybody wants a tablet OS, especially if they want if they don't have a touch screen. Like if you try to if you try to navigate through Windows 8 the tiles and you try to navigate on the uh, the uh, the parts of the OS that require swiping, um, using a mouse and keyboard just isn't um, efficient and and it's just a, it's a disaster. And uh, you know here you know at least with Linux and Mac OS, at least they're they're putting the fire under Microsoft to actually change their OS to a point where it can become you know user friendly again. But I think uh, Microsoft has dug in, dug themselves into a huge hole, and it's going to take a lot to um, get them back on track. What do you think about that, Zelik? Uh, <laughs> I have Windows nothing for to free, say, man. 
Yeah, Windows for free. Um, that's gonna be the day. That's gonna, that's just gonna be the day. Maybe alternate universe Windows will be like, yeah, sure, we'll release for free. Uh, unfortunately, this universe, uh, here's the only problem I see. For corporations, there's no, there's no such thing in their vocabulary as enough profit. For them to do that and, or for them to release their thing for free, they're gonna go bankrupt pretty much. Much. So I don't see how they're gonna really compete uh, either way. They're pretty much they've pretty much dug themselves in a hole that I can't see them getting out of. But I'll be the optimist and say, all right. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, number one, uh, they're really gonna have to beef up the prices on all of their products, plain and simple. You know, uh, you know Linux has a free Office suite with it, and then obviously, you know, if people are gonna want to continue using Microsoft Office, obviously they can't. Get, you know, they're gonna have to sell something, you know, if they're going to give their operating system away, you know, they're, they're probably going to have to jack up the prices on their office products and that sort of thing. And then, of course, using their normal schemes of fear, uncertainty and doubt to uh, push people to, uh, you know, use their free operating system. Uh, I don't know how that would play out or even if it if that's even going to happen. OK, uh, now something I wanted to bring up, uh, one of the members of the community asked that we speak about access accessibility features. Now, many of you know Compiz has a nice screen zoom for people with vision defects, and we also have screen readers for those who have, uh, you know, uh, who are blind. But my biggest gripe is that we have a terrible text-to-speech reader. I mean, the voices are horrible, and you have to do some real finagling with um, with wine to get some really natural-sounding voices uh, in this. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you just quickly, um, what kind of accessibility features would you like to see come to Linux? And we'll start with you, Far Evil D. Uh, let's see. Oh, one, I would like to see the gaming accessibility become a lot better than what it is. I mean, it is improving with Steam. Um, maybe something like um, better uh, printer support would be good. It's been one of Linux's um, Achilles heels for a while now. Uh, video drivers are becoming have been an issue in the past, like a lot of people have complained about with ATI and stuff. And there's just... I mean, you can't really say much. Uh, Matthew, how about you? Any ideas for better accessibility? Well, I think I agree with you on the uh, text-to-speech because uh, if you look at Compiz and even Kwin, there are components in there that uh, are good for people with visual problems. You can configure uh, in Linux your own shortcut keys for people that have difficulty typing. You can even configure mouse gestures on certain desktop environments. So I don't think any of that's an issue. I think the text to speech is probably one of the weakest points when you compare it to other systems. I mean, you know, Apple's even talking about, uh, I think they actually did do it this time in VAT Mavericks. They brought Siri from the iPad to their des desktop uh, operating system. You know, Google has uh, text-to-speech in their browser, their Chromebooks, and on Android. Even Windows has their own text-to-speech. Now, it doesn't work that great, but it is there. And you can get it to function. So, uh, I, I think I'm going to agree with you. I think text-to-speech is their weakest area on this. Okay. Yeah, and I'll have to agree. Now, um, I, I know you have to run real soon, Matthew, so I just want to throw a wrench into this discussion. We're just going to move on to the next topic here. Um, many of you know that Firefox has been in the news lately, and they plan on adding an HTML5 DRM component to its flagship browser. Well, what does this mean? Well, for one, we will not need to use Wine and a user agent switcher to access Netflix. So, in my opinion, I feel we are entering a new era in terms of digital media consumption. Uh, so, we'll start with you, TSS. What is your opinion on Linux having digital restrictions management or digital rights management? Well, I think this opens up the door not only for Linux, but also for other operating systems like Android, which, you know, is still Java based, but still it allows for um, web companies to actually deliver video. Of course, now um, with H.264 and H.265 on the, hor on the horizon, it's nice to see that we're finally getting the rec Linux is finally getting the recognition they deserve. And especially with uh, the pending thing. I mean, here's the other thing with Steam OS. This also opens the door for um, Steam and other developers to actually 
integrate HTML5 uh, digital rights content. So maybe we'll see um, Netflix support coming to SteamOS or maybe perhaps um, downloadable content, uh, downloadable videos that are behind you know some sort of a paywall. But I definitely see this as an advantage for Linux going in the future. And like I said, this not only applies for, for just desktop Linux, I'm talking about Android-based tablets and phone OSs as well. Because, of course, um, Silverlight has been the Achilles heel for Linux for many years. Matthew, I'd like to get your opinion on that. Do you think DRM poses any kind of a threat to Linux? Do you think this is a welcome addition? What do you think? Well, uh, we mentioned this in a previous podcast. DRM is okay if it's in the proper hands and used properly. But with anything, it can be abused. But... um, I do feel that DRM is probably a hard thing to to pass among a free software community. But, uh, you know, as Linux users, we do want Linux to become more popular and better supported by these companies and these vendors. And that's one of the things that a lot of these vendors require. They These vendors, they want regulation. They want to know that uh, they can invest in this thing called Linux and not lose. So I think on some level, you have to kind of close it down, DRM being one of those things. Um, but, you know, it, it all depends on whose hands it is in. Uh, I think I trust Mozilla with this because they've been pretty open so far about what they put into their code. Um, so I don't think it's that big of a deal, but at the same time i think the, if we really want linux to gain in popularity i do think there are going to have to be some compromises both on the user side to allow things like drm to happen in order to get the attention of major vendors uh to get them to support us yeah and i would have to agree now uh there is good news though for those of you who are free and open source purists you know um there is ice weasel for um for the you know the Debian uh, variant of it, which would not include any digital restrictions management, and then of course I'm sure there's going to be methods for people to um, opt out of uh, DRM browsers. So uh, if anything, I think this is going to be this is going to be something great for the Linux community because people do want to pay money to uh, view movies on Netflix or other streaming media services. I think it's great. And uh, folks, though we have run out of time, so. Uh, what I'd like to do is I would like to pass the mic over to everybody on our panel. Do you have any final thoughts on what you would like to see in Linux or what do you feel the future holds for Linux? And we'll start with you for Evil D. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, one the one big thing for me, because I'm a gamer, I mean, I would like to see the gamer games improve, which they are slowly. Um, maybe a few other things, you know, I mean... It's going to just have to see and see what happens. Matthew, what would you like to see in Linux in the future? Uh, Well, more vendor support from commercial uh, vendors because, you know, I don't think Linux is ever going to get to the popularity level and the support that we want it to be if we don't get the support of commercial companies and commercial vendors. There are some already involved, but not enough. Um, So what I would say in terms of that is for all the the free software lovers, you know, don't be so fanatical. Learn to compromise where it matters just to get these companies' attention. You know, they have to compromise coming into a open world just as we would have to compromise letting them in so i think we need to let this happen and get more vendor support and gain its uh more popularity in the commercial market toss today what would you what do you think about that well i as far as the linux desktop i think the future possibly belongs to google if they want to uh, take control of that market uh, as far as what i would like to see i have three simple words no more bugs <laughs> i knew that was coming tss what would you like to see I would actually like to see um, better. Well, in terms of um, in, in terms of software, um, better better documentation for the software because there's a lot of people that are coming from Windows and they want to have, you know, they want to make sure that you know they can find open source alternatives to the um, product productivity software and the like. But the problem is there's not a lot of documentation out there, and I wish that you know uh, Linux, major Linux distributions would just put it out there to, as better alternatives. Give like a list of what are the better alternatives and better documentation that's my opinion zelic um what i'd really wish for is if like people wouldn't start the uh, 
tossing other people about not liking other stuff, but whatever. But anyways, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, the people are people. Well, anyways, uh, with SteamOS and whatnot, I hope that uh, Linux will be more open and widely used to the general public because of the fact because of that fact. Because if it's not, then <laughs> what's going to really happen? It's not really going to go anywhere. Bug number one is going to stay here forever. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, that's, well, my final thought is, you know, um, I think Mark Shuttleworth uh, was in his right mind when he said that bug number one is solved. Because when you think about all the all the uh, mobile platforms and everything combined with uh, everybody using Linux, uh, Linux is a major contender out there, and Microsoft has every right to be worried. Um, the future of Linux is unknown, but the thing is, uh, one thing that I can say is I really enjoy how Linux has progressed over the time that I've been using it as my main OS. Every time, you know, Manharo sends me an update, I'm always overjoyed to see all the new things that are coming in and very excited about uh, the new software choices. And of course, you know, if a new piece of software comes in before the uh, update ships, you know, I can always open up a terminal and build that package from the AUR and try it out. You know, it, it's really exciting to see all these innovations coming. So for everybody that is contributing in the Linux world, creating new apps, applications, you know, from the people that are developing the kernels, to the people that are developing the applications, just keep doing what you're doing. We're very excited and we're very happy to be using this magnificent platform. All right, gang, well, we are all out of time for Evil D, Matthew Moore, Toss Today, TSS, and Zelic. Thank you for appearing on the panel tonight on this very first episode of Cup of Linux Lounge. We'll be back in the near future with another live podcast. Make sure that you are connected to me on G+, or just sign up for cupoflinux.com. That's where I'll be placing all the announcements for future podcasts. It's a great place to hang out and chill. I'd like to thank everybody who has been participating uh, by uh, speaking in the uh, Cup of Linux chat room at cupoflinux.com and everybody who is with us in the listening room. And uh, that's all we've got for now. Peace out. Mm -hmm.